So let's see how we can use the Starlink subscription to be enabled in Safeguard for various operation modes and what we can do with it and of course how to configure it. So first of all log in with the Windows based client to the uh, Safeguard system and click on the administrative tools and go to settings and in settings then select under external integration the Starlink menu. There's only one thing, just it tells you join to Starlink and click on that and click select the appropriate uh, data center depending on your location and enter the email address you have subscribed to Starlink. Click on next, just wait. So it just now comes back with that message, join to Starlink, do you want to do it or not? This is now the step to in decide, click on allow. And the join is successful. That's all it takes. Straightforward, very easy. So let's see how we can use and configure Starling uh, in Safeguard. So first of all, we need to change the configuration to use Starling. And to do this, you can you need to log in with the Windows-based client. And once you have done this with your administrative account go to the home icon and then go to the settings or the, uh, to the administrative tools, go to settings and click on external integration and Starlink. And once you have joined it and go to users and now we're going to use or configure Starlink to be used by a user for two-factor authentication when logging in. So just create a new user for this purpose and just work phone doesn't matter, but the mobile phone is important. It should be the same number you have subscribed in Starling as well as a user. And your email address, of course, must be the same as well. Click on next. Use a nice password. And click require secondary authentication. This will enable that two-factor authentication kicks in in the login process. And for the authentication provider, just use the Starling 2FA stuff we have just configured. So click on next, select the time zone, permissions, I don't know, need any permissions because I'm a standard user for this, so just go click on add user and it works a little bit in the background to link this together and now you have your user somewhere here. Here it is. If you double click on that it has authentication and the number, everything's here, so everything should work. Okay, so let's try it out. So in this case, just go for, you can use the browser if you want, just go for a browser, go to the safeguard, log in with your user ID. Now this is a local, it's not coming from a directory. It now tells me that I am going to receive something from Safeguard and I have a login request now on my mobile phone. So if I click on that, you're going to see this here on your mobile phone and I just simply click on approve and it's now being sent back and I'm logged in to my Safeguard. Straightforward, very easy. One Identity Privileged Account Governance, or PHG. What's behind that? First of all, it is a joint venture out of two products, One Identity Manager and One Identity Safeguard. At the end, One Identity Manager gets connected to Safeguard, and to do so, in the One Identity Manager, you need to install a PHG module. Once both systems are connected, all the benefits exist to support Safeguard, and this is what we like to talk about. In demonstrations, typically, this is not shown. The reason for is you need the full installation out of both products, Identity Manager and Safeguard, and have both products together in one big demo environment. This is a lot of preparation work to do. And so typically, a lot of people are solving that scenario, I like to say, more or less theoretically. Nevertheless, it exists and it works pretty good. What's the benefit out of this? Let's talk about Safeguard first, like we do in this video series all the time. Safeguard itself, it's a product that was mainly developed for technical experts, that means for administrative working people, 
have to manage privileged accounts, privileged sessions, privileged passwords to get elevated permissions on systems. This is typical under the business scenario because we typically try to avoid to have to assign to the business elevated permissions. However, because of that, nearly everything implemented in Safeguard is more for the use of technical experts. And if business people, that means people without a technical background, try to use Safeguard, that could be sometimes a little bit complicated to them. This completely disappears if you just connect Safeguard to the Identity Manager. Because the Identity Manager is a product that was mainly developed to be used from the business and the standard web front, which is used for nearly all purpose in the Identity Manager, it's a perfect sample for to be used by the business. What are the benefits in detail? If you just try to get Safeguard users, these are the people who can access Safeguard in a workflow, that means you try to request and approve a Safeguard users, then you need privileged account governance. Because in Safeguard, there is no way to have a request and approval workflow to generate Safeguard users. Safeguard users in Safeguard have just to be created on an administrative task and there is no workflow behind. Together with the Identity Manager, no problem, because in the Identity Manager, you can define a wonderful creation workflow for Safeguard users and you can do whatever else is possible in the identity match with such workflows. That means you can have as many approval steps as you like. You can have escalation approvers. You can have reactions until something is not approved by time and so on and so on. The full power of workflows is in the identity manager implemented and it's available for safeguard users. Additionally to that, talking about workflows, you can as well request passwords and sessions. This is something you will more do for the business use of these sessions and passwords. That means in that case that some business users, for example, for application servers, need some elevated permissions. They can request and approve this in the identity manager and get it provided by Safeguard. Next step in the whole scenario is that if you have a privileged account governance module installed, you can do governance. All the data in Safeguard, all assets, all users, all accounts are stored in the Identity Manager database as well. Okay, passwords not in all the credentials because they remain in Safeguard, but at the end, all the other data exists in the Identity Manager as well. With that, you can make them part of attestation, compliance rules, certification processes, processes at all, that means fulfillment processes, and so on. You can assign safeguard permissions to roles and whatever you like. There is nearly nothing you can't do. Reporting included. Auditing as well. And at least analytics. This is what the identity manager is doing out of the box because this is typically identity nexus governance. And together with Safeguard, this works now pretty well as well for privileged password sessions and all the objects we have in Safeguard. Not to forget that there is as well a risk management implemented and getting risky things, that means elevated permissions and their results out of Safeguard, can as well be used perfectly in a risk management for a specific identity in a company. All in all, as the name says, you get a perfect solution of identity nexus governance together with privileged account governance and this will absolutely secure your environment as much as possible with a maximum amount of control, which can as well be displayed and seen by the business, which is sometimes very helpful, especially because we all know the business is paying our bills.